morning, good afternoon, and welcome to the first webinar exclusively for students and alumni of the Jocan Fruit Institute. Today we have with us Javier Bosch, CEO and founder of the company NBN23, who is going to talk about big data and its application in the world of sports. Javier, welcome and many thanks for joining us. NBN23 is made up of a team of designers, software and app developers, advisors and marketing and communication specialists. They want to revolutionize the way we understand and live basketball through real tracking. Javier will explain what data can be obtained and how to analyze it. He just got back from New York. The NBA used their system to get real statistics at one of the junior tournaments. So we will learn today how to convert big data into smart data. Javier, whenever you want, uh, we are ready for your presentation. Okay. Thank you very much, Emma. Thanks for the presentation. Can you hear me well? Yes. Okay. Um, well, it's uh, for me, it's a pleasure and uh, it's an honor to, to be talking to, to your audience uh, today. Uh, we, thank the, we thank the Johan Cruyff Institute for giving us the opportunity to, to explain all the uh, all your alumni and all your uh, current students uh, what we're doing and uh, how can we help to, to improve the way that data and, and sports uh, get along. Um, the name of the presentation is um, it's called From Big Data to Smart Data, and uh, this is why we uh, we are listening all the time how important big data is into sports and uh, we are aware of the importance of big data but uh, first thing is first thing and we have to uh, help uh, sport start recording data so when we talk about smart data first thing we want to do is create that data in order to make it uh, uh, usable and to and to start getting this big data to to obtain what sports need which is winning more games and winning more money in order to keep on going as a, as a club or as a team. Let me share my 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 screen. I'll, I'll do it so I can show you my presentation, and I'll go over it to, to explain you what we do and why we do it. Well, MBN stands for Nothing But Net. We are a tech company, but we are basketball fans and basketball lovers. When we started the company, we, we had in mind um, to digitalize what happens in every single basketball game. This is why uh, uh, we are basketball freaks. We love it. Uh, we all, or most of my company, have played basketball, and we found very interesting to know what, uh, what we perform. So it doesn't matter the level you have. You want to know what you did. And uh, this means that it doesn't matter the level you have, you're generating valuable info that can be uh, used if it's properly digitalized. And this is how we created uh, competition, which is uh, the, first, uh, the first software we created. Um, competition um, is based on, the, on one lack that we found on the market. We, we know that in every single basketball game, all the actions to follow the results are taken into one paper called a score sheet. In this score sheet, you can, you can follow the results and you can see uh, who scored which basket. And this is the official paper that is needed to, to send the, the official result to the organizer of the competition. Still, today, in 2017, it's done mainly in pen and paper. And this is what we found that was the first thing. It is very interesting to do big data, but let's start with small data. Let's start with smart data. Let's digitalize what is not being digitalized yet. This is the common score sheet that I'm talking about. Okay, you can see here that there are a lot of numbers that have to be taken by hand. And uh, this means that it's a manual process that needs uh, paper going up and down, uh, no register of what's being done there and no way to do analytics because it's just paper that uh, will be on a desk or, or in a, uh, or in a uh, uh, box for the next five years without the, the possibility to get the info out of that. 
this generates a lot of frustration when uh, when you try to organize better your your own organization because if you actually go now and ask a, a national federation who's the best scorer under 13 uh, they won't be able to tell you because they don't have the record so um, in order to to do better scouting and to generate a better experience for the players we think that it can be done digital and digital means uh, to go with a tablet download a simple app and uh, have all the players already uh, uh, pre-charged in your app and start typing what is going on. And instead of writing down, you type, and then you create all the process of getting the data, storing it, processing it, and showing it. And this means that you can take really uh, value out of that. Um, how our system works, it's uh, based on three different uh, sections. First thing, we do have a backend manager where we help the, the competition organizer to record all the data. So it's the first thing we help them is let's get all the registers uh, controlled. Let's, let's know uh, who are the players, who are the, uh, who are the coaches, who are the referees. Let's generate all the rules that we need in order to, to create a competition. And let's make it as um, complex as possible at the beginning. So during the game, it's as simple as possible. Okay, then there's an app that is the app that we use to record the stats and what happens during the game. So all the actions that are usually taken in pen and paper will be typed into an app that you'll see later. And then we do have a front end, a way to display the info in a very nice way to generate more encourage uh, uh, with the um, uh, engagement with the fans to get uh, also the, the brands linked to, to what happened with the players. So it's a good way to generate new uh, revenues and uh, basically to, to start showing what has been registered, okay? And this is the best way to start generating value out of that. What our software competition modules include are just not just a packet and a way to display data. There are a lot of inside apps that help uh, to generate all the, all the um, 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 all the way from collecting the data to displaying it. And it saves a lot of uh, time afterwards and it gives solutions to many things such as um, a scoreboard that you'll see later that can be generated or the uh, license that the player has to, has to carry on when he's going to play. He's not needed to carry it anymore because it's already installed in the app and so on. Well, as I said, first thing, uh, is let's generate, how do we do it? We, we use a database where we introduce the, the, the name of the players. Actually, it's created in a way where each one generates its own data. So if I'm a player, I would fulfill all my info. My team would fulfill just the info from the team because they would have all the info from the players. And the federation has only to fulfill the info from the federation because all the info coming from clubs and players, it's already in the system. Um, you can generate all the rules that will be then uh, downloaded into the app. So you won't have to be counting uh, or taking care if uh, the time is more or less. It, it's already everything pre-installed. And this helps you to have a very simple app that during the game allows you to do it very, very quickly and very easy. So with no need of having more people during the game, you can be collecting all this data. Okay. Actually, we do have two different apps because uh, in basketball, you, you may want to record um, uh, the stats that tells you special actions, not just points and, uh, and fouls, but you may want to know if there was a block or if there was um, uh, uh, a steal. Uh, you can do that with our advanced uh, version, but we do have a simple version that is meant for the grassroots, for, for the very, very low levels where someone that never has uh, done um, a score sheet can do and follow the game. They just have to press six buttons that you can see here with the different actions that are being registered uh, after the referee tells you what to do. As you can see, it's very simple and it's uh, meant for a tablet of uh, between seven and 10 inches can be done, okay? Then the cool part of this is to display the data. Okay, uh, first thing is we generate the score sheet digitally. So the same thing that you had before, you're going to get it instantly. I mean, you're going to have that. 
but that's not the best way to display data. A nice way to display data is how we did for the junior MBA programs, either in, in we, we did in Spain and in the US, but I'll show you now the website. Uh, but not only that, if you have the content, then you can generate uh, more and more visuals based on that. Uh, so imagine that we are able to generate a poster with the data coming from the best the MVP player, but it doesn't have to be the MVP. I mean, you can do it from uh, any different player because we do have the data. Now is the time to make it nice to, to show it. And you can show it in, in, in a website, you can show it in a poster, but you can show it also in streams during the tournament, okay? There are different ways to display it. At the end, is a uh, relevant info. Um, the, the app not only sends the info to the cloud that helps everyone to see it, but also we have created a mirror system where with a, just a computer screen or a TV, you can have a scoreboard. This saves a lot of uh, money to federations because they don't have to have two people different, one collecting the data on one side and another one managing the scoreboard, but the system does it automatically. So just one, one person collecting data generates the two ways to display. So we are doing uh, here, uh, we are helping them to, to save also some cost. So basically, what's the difference between collecting data in one way and collecting it in the old way is that one way you just do what you have to do, which is uh, keep the score and send the official paper. And in the other one, you do the same thing, plus a lot more things that allow a, a federation or a competition to get more uh, to get more fans and to get more followers and to get the players more engaged with what they do. Let me show you a little bit how it looks, what we did with um, with NBA, and I'm gonna share my I'm gonna share my my screen again. So here, this is what we've done for the Madrilenian Federation or for the Canary uh, Island Federation, or what we did for for Junior NBA in Spain. Um, if you collect the data with our app, what you're gonna get instantly and what you're gonna be seeing in real time is this kind of uh, of results that show the, the the difference in the in the score. You can see where they were shooting from and what the percentages were. All these statistics, okay? You can see all the like regular statistics that you can see in a basketball game. But the best way, uh, the best thing we've done is a way to compare between different players. So you get them more engaged comparing and looking once uh, um, all over again and all over again. So you have a lot of traffic coming to these websites and this helps the, the organizers to have uh, the sponsors such as Danone was here getting a lot of visibility. Because we have to be aware that uh, uh, grassroots, um, they only have a lack of resources. So whatever we are able to, to help them to generate more uh, sources of income is going to help the sport in the in very basics. So um, I'll change again to, to my presentation. So as you see, um, we, we can be talking about many ways, and you'll see now our other product that we have for, uh, for digitalizing uh, professionals in this case. But as a company, what we wanted to do was to, to be able to, to help, um, uh, to help uh, grassroots to, to generate value from what they do. I'm back with my presentation. I hope you see well my PowerPoint. If not, Gemma, please let me know. Then we go to performance. Um, we were working for a year and a half uh, recording data for grassroots, and we thought, wow, this is great because we are offering the same experience that a professional has for little kids, and this is going to generate more engagement. But can we do something for professionals? So we took a look at what was uh, going on with MBA. Um, we saw that they were offering special stats based on uh, the position of the players in the court. So we thought, wow, why, why doesn't it exist anywhere else? So we checked and we realized that tracking players was very expensive and only NBA teams could afford it. So we started to think uh, in a way to do it um, affordable for the rest of the leagues because actually there are only 30 teams in NBA and there are 450 million basketball players. So it, it didn't make sense to, to wait for that technology. Uh, so we started to, to work on a system that uh, basically what we do is we do have um, um, a system like an internal GPS 
that allow us to know where the players are in, at any time. And we, are, we use this kind of tags. Here it is. So it's a very light and uh, small, tiny tag that sends liquid signals and uh, through the location of, um, of uh, uh, installing locators in the facilities, in the arenas, we are able to tell where the player is at any time. I'm going to share back my, my screen and I'm going to show you a video that was in uh, Movistar and, uh, and you'll see how, how it works. Can you see my Google Chrome, Gemma? Yes, I can see it. Okay, perfect. So I'm going to display now a video. This is um, a program cl uh, called Clubbers, and it's a basketball TV show that Movistar Plus does in, in Spain. And they talk about, um, about many things regarding basketball, and they made this special thing about technology applied to, to basketball. So there's no sound on it. I'll go explaining what, what they say. You can also read it. Um, well, basically, they're talking about how uh, technology is going to be inside sports and how different teams are advancing in order to get more data than they usually have. Um, they say that there's a company in Spain that is called NBN23, obviously it's us, um, that is uh, developing a solution to track players in real time and, uh, and that there are some teams that are using it. Now here they're making an introduction on how sports are helping, um, uh, technology is helping professional sports to go uh, to the next level, such as in football that you know that they're talking a, a lot about the VAR and so on. And here this is where they're uh, starting to talk about Valencia Basket and what they do to, to, to get uh, uh, the best results. They do a lot of, um, a lot of tests to the players and they are using a tracking system, the resource system, that tells you where they are at any time. We've been using it with the EVA team, and um, uh, it's uh, helping them to know the effort that all the players have done, because we are able to measure the speed, um, the distance, and the accelerations and decelerations they do in real time. So this is a good, uh, a good way to, to tell a coach or to tell a player if they should uh, slow down or if they should increase their their levels of uh, of um, effort. Uh, what Miguel, uh, my mate, is saying here is that uh, one day this kind of technologies will help to avoid injuries. Actually, um, here Pedro, he's the physical coach of Valencia Basket, explains uh, basically what they usually do and all the techniques they they use and what he expects uh, to get from, uh, from this uh, technology. Um, I'll, I'll explain you, there are different ways to, to, measure, uh, to measure a player in, in real time, um, but it has to be always with um, something that sends signals and something that receives signals. Because if you do it through, through cameras, that is the existing technology, you're going to need always someone helping you to, to, to get the data uh, in, in real time because you need to process it a little bit. And here to finish the video, they're saying that the, the next step is to use all this info for TV because this is uh, more, uh, more data that can help the, can help the, uh, the fans enjoy having more and more data to, to, to see while they're watching the game. So you can tell the maximum speed of a player when uh, he's uh, doing a layup or or whatever. Okay. So this is at least so you get an idea of what we did with the with the performance. I'll go back to the presentation. And this is what performance does. So we are able to to basically know where they are and how they move in real time, and this means that we can measure speed and distance with a very high precision. Okay. Um, this is more or less the way we, we see it, and uh, based on that is how we can uh, set the top uh, speed and distance uh, cover, the workloads, and the accelerations and decelerations that a player has done. One of the challenges we had was how do we give this data to the team? Um, a challenge that we're going to face in the in, in time, all the companies that we are doing uh, technology for sports, is an easy way to display data for a team. 
they're going to have more than one source of info because we could be the providers for uh, positioning each way and set. But they're going to have uh, someone that is going to measure the lactic acid and they're going to have another company that will be collecting all the heart rate um, um, uh, monitor that they're using or whatever. So we have focused our efforts in sending the, the info to whatever uh, can read info. And one of uh, the examples is Power BI. Power BI is a Microsoft tool, such as like Microsoft Excel, that allows you to get the info coming from different sources and compare it. Because this is what the teams need, not just more data, but data that they can compare. Again, we are talking about smart data. It's not about how, how long they ran or how fast they did it. It's how far they did it if I compare it with himself another day or if I compare it with his heart rate or with whatever. So they need to do the, this correlation of data. And uh, for, for that, the info has to be displayed in a way that can collect data coming from different sources. And this is why we use Power BI to, to display it like this. And this is basically what, what we do for basketball. Um, uh, we don't stop here. We are having, uh, we are finishing a very, very interesting project that will be launched in a month time. And what we're doing is we are um, starting with swimming and we're developing a tool to be able to track swimmers in real time and to prevent from, uh, from drowning because we are able to detect if somebody drowned uh, or if somebody's swimming. So it could be something that in, uh, in, the, short, uh, in the short term could be helping to, to avoid uh, uh, problems in, uh, in swimming pools. So as you see, there are a lot of things that can be done with technology applied to sports. And here you have our, our data in case you want to contact us directly. Okay, so Gemma, if you want to ask us uh, some questions now, here we are. Okay, uh, Javier, thank you very much for, for, for this nice presentation. Um, yeah, actually, uh, hearing you, I have some, some questions that come to my mind. The first is, how is uh, that something as obvious as doing away with statistics on paper has not been implemented until now? Is it that it's uh, too expensive or what is the reason why? Uh, well, uh, I used to work in a huge company before uh, I started my own project. And every time you talk about changing the way of doing things, um, you have to fight, fight against change itself. So the first barrier we had to jump was uh, they've been doing it in pen and paper forever. So why would they change? Um, the, same, uh, the same challenge we found was, uh, I guess, found by anyone else. But... Uh, what we think uh, and why it didn't exist before, it was because there was no a 360 degrees solution that would cover all the needs of uh, one organizer. So you could find apps in one way to record some kind of data, you could have a software to help you somewhere else, but then to put it all together is not that easy. So I think it had to happen two things. So one thing is that there was a full solution to exist, and this is what NBN was offering. And another that we don't have to forget is that technology is needed in the courts and um, hardware is needed and you need a tablet. And the price of tablets have uh, dropped down a lot in the last years. So to think of having an iPad of 700 euros in every single uh, basketball court back five years ago would have been crazy. But now you can have a $100 uh, tablet in every single basketball court and this is something affordable. So it has to happen two things. First thing is affordable technology and 360 solution. Okay. So uh, could we say that uh, a smart data is only available for smart studies right now? Uh, well, I think smart is something that um, probably is too open. And I think smart data is smart data as long as you are able to do something with it. Uh, smart stadiums, uh, they're collecting a lot of data and for sure they're doing things with it. But you can do smart data through just some notes you take on a paper. The thing is that the, the more you digitalize and the more you organize uh, and standardize the way to collect it, the more data you're going to have and the smartest it's going to be. So basically, in our opinion, data is smart if the guy who looks at the data is smart. So let's don't miss that. There's not like a miracle formula that would say, if you use these solutions, you're going to win games. So um, what we think is every time there are more and more data to be collected, 
more and more data to be analyzed, and it'll be uh, smart as long as somebody makes something smart with it. Okay, and uh, don't don't take me wrong, but uh, are uh, coaches smart enough right now to understand all this big data, or do you need to to teach them how to do it? Um, being honest. Uh, the question I would ask myself is, are we smart enough to show them how good it is? Because in my opinion, the best data and the smartest data today available is a coach's brain. Because they're processing a lot of data and they know who should be playing in which position because they are actually analyzing a lot of data coming from what they see and what they know from before because they know how the player was practicing before, uh, if he had a personal problem, uh, and all that, and he mixes everything in, into his head and he makes a decision. So we have to be able to provide info so easily that for them it's natural to use it, okay? And we are at the very early stages for that. So it doesn't mean that they're not smart uh, or they don't know how to use data because they do it every day. It's that we are providing another source of info and we, the, the, the companies, we have to be smart enough to make it so natural that they don't realize that they just have more info than they had before. Because if they have to practice and if they have to learn how to use it, then we're doing something wrong. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, would you say that this technology could change trading methods or not? Yeah. Um, first thing is um, start gathering data. Uh, imagine if, um, if, I guess you're asking about the performance app that we have, so the way to, uh, when professionals use it to, to practice. Mm -hmm. If we know what happened before an injury, so if somebody gets injured now, and I take a look at what he did the last two weeks, and I do it for the next X amount of time with all the players that have had injuries uh, among a country or a, or a continent, I would be able to predict that by doing this, it could happen that, okay? So will it change it? Yes. Th there will be a moment in which there will be something like a sign saying, hey, now it's time to stop based on what I know that has happened before. Are we close from that? No, we are not yet, okay? So uh, is it gonna change the way they practice? Yes. When? I would say in the next five, six years. Something like this, but not as, as uh, now because first thing you need to collect the data and start making uh, making all these artificial intelligence based on what happens with it. Mm -hmm. um, you said uh, in your presentation that uh, you were looking at uh, what was going on in the NBA before uh, doing all all your your projects, but uh, I wonder if you check other sports and what they are doing uh, in terms of technology to apply also to NBN23? Uh, yeah, for sure. We, um, we know that uh, the most advanced technologically talking sports are um, NFL, so American football. Uh, they are doing tracking and they're using a system very, very similar to, to ours. Uh, the solution is called Zebra, and Zebra is uh, an American company that does something very similar to us. But instead of using Bluetooth, they're using uh, ultra wideband plus RFID. So basically, same thing. I mean, they have a chip, they send signals, they collect signals, and they do the triangulation. So actually, by looking at them is when we did this match of ideas. So, okay, uh, basketball uh, is good for tracking, and tracking can be done with something else than just cameras that are too expensive. Uh, in football, in uh, soccer, uh, European football and uh, worldwide football, they do they do tracking using cameras okay so we did check and uh, we found that that was the the best solution uh, there are other sports that are starting to to record data but the most advanced would be would be those if we talk about uh, the grassroots and the, and what data has been collected is baseball the sport that has been uh, gathering data for longer so we we looked a lot to what happened in the us with baseball to, to, to see what could be done with, with basketball as well. Mm -hmm. uh, talking about uh, grassroots and no professional teams, um, when someone contracts your service, uh, does the application come with everything or does it have different phases depending on what the client wants? Can you explain a little bit of it? No, I think it's a good question because um, 
uh, we don't just provide an app. And uh, this is something that we all have to understand. When we talk about uh, digitalization and going to one step further, um, we have to understand that it's not as simple as I download an app and it works. Uh, we are talking about changing the way things are done. So we actually, we go with the customer and we help him in the way, in the transition from paper to digital. So uh, to, to tell you, I was today with uh, an international federation. They just left uh, an hour ago uh, from Latin America. And uh, basically what we told them is that we are going to help you to digitalize everything you do, but we will be with you. We're going to be flying there. We're going to be teaching your people. We will be installing all the all the apps into your tablet. We will show you, and then uh, you will work with it. So the price includes not only the software, not only the hardware, but also uh, the account management. You have to be helping uh, the customer because if not, change won't happen. And you will ask me before, uh, why did it happen that it didn't happen before and still they were using pen and paper? And I think that it had to happen, not only the two things I, I meant before, but the third thing is somebody helping you. Because if not, it's like, man, if I'm able to do it with my pen and paper, why should I waste one minute of my life doing something that I don't need? So the best way to teach someone that they really need it is helping them and guiding them. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, I see I have, uh, and I can be asked uh, the following question, okay? Uh, the social component that, that uh, you mentioned, I think it, he thinks it's, it's very interesting. What is lacking in basketball to generate more fan engagement? Um, well, you know that uh, Spain is an example of uh, media focusing a lot in one sport, that is, um, that is uh, football instead of basketball. Um, engagement, uh, to engage people, what you have to offer is value. And what happens with uh, basketball is that it's a very spectacular sport. And uh, one of the things that they were lacking was systems to organize the, the data and show it through social networks in order to generate this, uh, uh, this engagement. For instance, NBA spend a lot of money changing the, the camera systems they have. And they do have one way to record the, the games, uh, the traditional way, so you can see the game uh, through TV and that works perfectly, but they implemented a second way to record. So they have uh, bigger images of the players and they have like a closer approach to the game. So they can generate more materials, visuals, that will be sent through, uh, through cell phones and tablets. And this generates more and more uh, uh, engagement with the fans because they can share it and, and see it. One thing that we have to learn from NBA is that uh, most of the games aren't seen completely. People watch every time more and more um, uh, summaries of the games. So one of the things that basketball was missing from professionals to grassroots was an easy way to display the data and to organize it so people can consume uh, the data as they need it and neither get overwhelmed with a lot of info or not get it enough. But there's also a success case in basketball that are the fantasy games. Uh, in Spain, the super manager game that ACB did was a very successful tool to get engagement from people. So there are a lot of people watching ACB thanks to the game. And by the way, this is something we're going to be doing for grassroots. We're going to be including a, a super manager for grassroots because we know that uh, by gamificating the experience to get more engagement. And this is something we want to help uh, basketball. Mm -hmm. uh, another attendee is asking, uh, related to what, what you were saying now, uh, can this uh, application or uh, product help the scouting uh, in, in uh, the scouters in grassroots? Absolutely. Um, I, I mentioned before that if you ask a federation right now, who's the best scorer under 13, they don't know because there's no tool for that because they're not recording it. So right now, actually, it's very simple because you just have to do some filtering and you will uh, uh, find out who was the best doing something and then you can uh, follow those players. And uh, if you want to see if they perform like that in the last 10 games, you can see each one of the games and by looking at the play-by-play, -play, you can easily uh, do it. So yeah, for sure, that's, that's gonna, that is one of the things. But it's not one of our of objectives. Um, we think that um, in grassroots, 
kids have to enjoy. And we don't think it has to be like professionalizing what happens before. Or what we think is that um, we have to mix. And many of the times we say, we have to make kids feel like professionals, but enjoy like professionals, not have the bad, the bad side of professionals. And we want to have professionals enjoying like kids, getting the same experience that kids do uh, uh, have when they play. So it's going to help, yes. Um, but we are looking at very nice ways to, to help, not only through the stats, because we will be able in the near future to record not only what happens with uh, the actions taken in basketball, but also we are generating a, a, an alternative way of collecting data based on values and uh, based on the way the, the, the players behave during a game. So you will be able to see if uh, a kid is respectful, if uh, it's loyal, if, uh, if uh, um, he applies the effort that is needed for a team, and all these kind of things that is going to help the scouting, not only good shooters, but also good players and good people. Interesting. Um, another question coming through is, uh, are you, I think you answered this uh, shortly in your presentation, but are you planning to apply it to other sports? Sure. Um, as I said, as a brief introduction that um, um, we are launching now, um, we are jumping into swimming. And uh, in the near future, we will be jumping to other sports. First thing is basketball because it's our passion and we've got tons of work to do here still. Uh, but uh, yes, uh, we know that basically the more data you digitalize, the more value you get. And it's not only for basketball, same thing can be done for handball, for volleyball, for most of uh, uh, team sports that are played. So yeah, we will be doing it. Mm -hmm. uh, thinking on maybe a question that some of our uh, alumni that, or uh, current students are, are wondering is, uh, how do you start uh, a startup? Because uh, you, you start this project like a, a startup and how, how did you do that? with the finance, with the, the people you needed to employ? Okay, um, this is a good question as well, because um, um, to start is hard, so you need to be a little bit crazy, that's first thing. So you have to think that you can change the world, and then you realize that the world is like this for some reason, so it's not that easy, but it can be done. Uh, so if I have to tell someone, if you want to start your own business, First thing is to look at your team. Uh, look who's with you, uh, because at least I would recommend to have two people. Two people is already a team. Um, when I started, uh, I had a background coming from sales, and I was uh, a basketball fan that knew that uh, there was a value into getting the data, but I didn't have the knowledge, the technical knowledge. So um, I partnered with one guy that was uh, technical, so he was a programmer and myself, and we started like that. Um, and then what we did was, since we didn't have uh, money to start, was we were aggregating people to our team that was willing to work, uh, not for free, but just to be part of the project. And we were uh, growing without money at the very beginning. Then we were able to attract money once we were able to show that we were uh, able to do things. Okay. So now in the stage we're in right now, um, we are now showing big investors that what we have done so far can change, can change not only the life of a few people, but of millions of people worldwide. So you have to see it as a stage process in which first thing you have to think global, but act uh, uh, local. And you have to think big, but act small uh, and, uh, and go step by step. It's tough, but it's nice. So I would recommend it to people being very analytic and, goes, and going step by step. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, I'm gonna do that uh, last question, if, uh, if it's okay for you, Javier. Mm -hmm. uh, they are asking for your next big project. <laughs> My next big project? Um, well, I think, I think it's going to be the swimming thing. Um, uh, unfortunately, uh, two weeks ago, there was one little uh, girl that died in Ripoll, in Girona because there was an accident in a public swimming pool. Uh, this is like the airplane's uh, accident. Uh, when something happens, it's because there was a lot of things that happened that 
end up with uh, with um, an accident like this. Uh, we think that technology can help to reduce their risks by by adding new ways to know where the people are. If I am able to know where a basketball guy is in the court, it means that I'm able to know where a swimmer is. So this is our next big project. Not only make uh, more fun to swim, but make it more secure and change the life of many fathers like me, that I do have kids, and I'm afraid every time they get close to a swimming pool because it's a dangerous place. So we want to make a swimming pool a nicer place or a safer place to, to be. And this is what is going to happen from here till the end of the year. Okay, Javier, so I think we are done. Uh, I would like to say many thanks to everyone for uh, participating in this webinar. Mm -hmm. uh, Remember to everybody that the next one will be in October. We hope, uh, we hope that you have enjoyed as much as we did with you, Javier. Thank and, you. Uh, and to you, many thanks for your time and uh, the best luck for the future. Thank you very much. And um, I want to I wanna thank uh, for your time. And I want to encourage all your alumni and all your current students to keep on uh, fighting to change, uh, to change the world because just by being this little bit crazy and by having a good team uh, around you, you guys can make it. They will try. Yeah. Thanks, Javier. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.